moment of truth. I'm gonna line it up, vertical. At getting this whole spacing right and perfectly aligned, but you can use it as a dual purpose. So this is a little motor mount for a Makita router. It's a 65 millimeter diameter, and these will lock down and it will pinch the router in. It holds it really, really solid, but it doesn't have mounting holes to put onto your main Z axis. So we need to be able to get holes that are here and here and figure out how we want to mount it. But we really want some exact spaced holes. Why do we want that? Because then we can make a template going all the way down using that same spacing and all the way up. That gives us a capability of mounting other tools to it. And also if we need to ever shift our router down because we need more or less Z axis space, it gives us some flexibility that wasn't there before. And also if you ever end up going with a spindle, you might need to scoot this up. Having a solid router mount for your CNC is really, really important. Typically, most of the router mounts are either 65 millimeter diameter or they're 80 millimeter diameter, whether you have a handheld router or a spindle. Some of the spindles are 65 millimeter, some are 80. There's probably some other variants out there, but those are the two dominant ones. This is a router mount that I got off of Amazon. It's really, really solid. It's about 25 bucks for this mount. And it's great because it'll just allow you to slip your Makita router in, which is what I use. That's because it's variable speed, but you could use a spindle in here as well, that as long as it's 65 millimeters in diameter, and these will these are threaded and you can just pinch down in and hold it rigid. But the downside is it does not come pre-machined with these holes on the side. And that is the big challenge. You can't get a drill bit in from the top easily and keep them vertical. That means we have to figure out a way to precisely mill these out of this metal uh, from the backside. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give you the means to make a 3D printable template that goes over the surface. I will also in a later video give you a printable version that you can just print on a regular printer if you do not have 3D printer available to make this jig. Why would I do this jig and not just do the paper? Because this will give me a vertical alignment of my drill bit as I'm going down and if I clamp it right, I should be able to hand drill these out. In fact, that's exactly what I did when I made these. I'll show you all that in the video. It worked great. And this has got a dual purpose. It'll allow you to also make a whole spacing very, very accurately inside the main board that your gantry is. But without further ado, let me show you the ins and outs of this program. This is OpenSCAD once again. I've shown you in an earlier video that you can just get this. It's from very, very easily by using Google, type in OpenSCAD, download it, install it on your computer. It's available in multiple things, completely free, completely open source. I'm gonna give you the script that goes inside the program. It's below the description of this video, just left click, hold down the button, select all the text, right click to copy it to clipboard. And then if you open up OpenSCAD and go into the editor window, which is where this cursor is now hovering, you can just control V, paste it into the window and then hit the F6. And when it, you do, you should end up with something that looks similar to this. Now, if one of these windows happens to not appear, go up to the window button and just unclick whatever is hidden. If they move around, you can grab them at the top and you can drag these window panes in different positions. I don't wanna go into all that uh, specifics of all this. I've gone over that before in previous videos, but with this pasted in, you've hit F6. Let's say you get to this. Let me tell you how this works. This is the parameter that I call the width, the distance from here to here. The height, I'm calling this distance right here. The hole spacing is how far apart each one of these holes that I'm going to be drilling out are going to be located from each other. The first hole position is how far the first hole is from the edge up to here. The extrude height is how high we want this to be extruded upwards right here. The uh, tolerance is the holes. Once I set the diameter, how much extra space that I want in those holes. The number of holes is how many we go up. If you put more holes and you set your spacing that's greater than what's on here, it's gonna go off and you won't see the holes appear. You've gotta either adjust this bottom one or the spacing between. If you put too many 
it will just go off and you will not see any impact. So don't think it's not working. It is working, but you have to have it within the capabilities. The screw hole diameter is the screw holes that I put across the top so that you can mount this down into a board. And the screw hole spacing is how far this way and this way they are from the center point. The center hole in the screw structure is always perfectly aligned with the width, the way I wrote the program. Everything that I just that I have in here as presets is what I use to drill out my particular holes. It should be good to go with this particular router mount if you choose to go that route off of Amazon. But I wanna show you how to adjust it and it'll just emphasize the power of OpenSCAD. With this customizer open and you've clicked down on this little black arrow to bolt, bring this up, you could adjust any of these parameters either with a slider by typing a new value over here or using the up down arrows. For example, let's go ahead and adjust the spacing between these. Right now it's set from here to here. Every one of these is spaced out 20 millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna grab the slider. I'm going to pull it down, immediately you'll see the program responds by changing the spacing. Uh, if I wanna reset this, I can go to the top and hit reset and it will go ahead and put it back to the original parameters. Let's say you didn't want quarter inch holes going, you're gonna mount with a different size bolt, then we can adjust the hole diameter. But let's say you wanted to put M5 machine screws in there and immediately they all adjust appropriately. What else? This thickness here is just to help mount. Maybe you feel like it needs to be a little thicker. We can go over here and immediately you can see that it extruded more plastic. I left this hole open because it reduces the uh, chances of this popping off your bed. It also makes it easier to line if there's holes in your or screws already in your board when you line up patterns. That's what this center hole is here. You can also change the diameter of these screw holes if you wanted to. So I can just shift it up if I wanted to. If I want to change their spacing, I can go over here and grab it, change it. Might be worth your while to spread them out even a little bit more because that should be a little more stability. When you get all done, I'm gonna reset this so it goes back to the original parameters. To export this to print, go over to the file, go down to export, and instead of doing SVG like we've done in earlier, which is two-dimensional, this is a three-dimensional file we're gonna export as an STL. Once you have it as an STL, then take it into your favorite printer slicer software, go ahead and slice it, 3D print it. Should take you about an hour and a half to print this. Depends on how thick of layers, it's up to you how fine a structure you want. And then you should be ready to mill it. I'll show you that on my garage. So this is a quarter inch drill bit and I'm gonna go ahead and drill down a couple of these holes and then I'll immediately put a bolt through so that it stabilizes and then I'll go do the back ones, put a bolt through. I'll remove these clamps and then I'll drill out those and hopefully by doing all that I can keep this vertical with this drill guide and that that will keep these things perfectly aligned so we're going to give it a shot and we'll see how this all plays out so moment of truth so I'm going to line it up it's vertical I think this came out really, really, really good. I'm super pleased with how that jig held and the whole spacing looks really nice. It's gonna make for mounting routers to this so much easier and designing my Z axis. I'll be able to put those evenly spaced holes all the way up. Let me just show you the original template. 
I actually had another one of these printing on my 3D printer because I figured it would get so marred up that it was going to just be shot. And honestly, this is not a problem. And I don't know how well you can pick this up, but I put little screw holes so I can mount it on my board. We're going to drill out our main gantry board now. This whole jig we created to make our spacing on our metal router mount is more versatile than you might think. Not only is it great at getting these whole spacing right and perfectly aligned, but you can use it as a dual purpose. You can use it to line your holes on your main Z axis and then just drill them out. In fact, if you put down the ball nut housing on the ball screw, you can actually use these to help align this. You can also put a center line down this with a T-square and this center hole, because it's perfectly aligned from this side to this side at the midpoint, you can look through before the screws are in there and make sure it's perfectly aligned and then anchor it down with screws. And that way you know that you're perfectly set up. Drill a couple holes. Once a couple are in, you're gonna put bolts down through the holes. That just makes sure that nothing is moving around. Put a couple more in, put a couple more bolts drill them out and then it's just a matter of taking this template very very fast shifting it down a few holes and using those bolt holes that you created to realign it you probably don't need the screws at that point and then drilling all the way down and because of the way this was designed you also have this capability you can actually straddle this and go up make sure that when you do this, that you keep consistent at which way you align this because this spacing right here could be a little bit different than this top. The whole spacing between is the same. And as long as you're using that bolt method, it shouldn't make a difference, uh, but it will make a little bit difference for the where the first hole goes, whether you had it oriented like this or whether you had it oriented like this, you can decide, but don't fail to go all the way up why do we want to do that? Because it gives us lots of mounting possibilities. This turns out to be very valuable with certain projects that you might want to do on your CNC. It also allows us, because these hole spacing are very exact, to easily make jigs that we can mount elsewhere on this Z gantry, like vacuum hoses or lights or cameras or things like that. Really, really, really useful. If you found this video to be useful to you and you appreciate the open source, if you could hit like, leave a comment, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in and I hope uh, you're going. Once again, this is still a template. I'm gonna really uh, probably take OpenSCAD and since I have a CNC available, I'm not gonna use this to cut these, but I'm gonna make holes in my board that I'll put little T-nut inserts and that's the way I would recommend you go is T-nut inserts because that way we can just tighten it down from the top and you don't have to get to the back side to grab a hold of the nut as this goes through, which can be really tricky. And you'll find once you get this built that you'll have to shim this up one way or the other, even though you've done it straight, there's still always a little bit of shimming that has to go as you try to line this uh, with your router. And so sometimes you have to put shims up or down and being able to do it all from the top side with the tightening is much easier scenario. And then you can slip something right under the router mount versus having to crawl under, loosen the nut, fix it, tighten it back down. Trust me, this is, it would be better if you can put T-nuts up from the bottom side.